how does one who is single and has been single for a while and has been very good at being single for a while, how does that person who is now, especially, and, and this is going to sound like I'm talking about you, but I'm talking about a lot of friends right now that we have that are late 30s, mm-hmm. early 40s. They don't need to get married. They're doing great. They're making money. But they're getting to a point where they're sitting there saying, I wouldn't mind having a kid. Right. I wouldn't mind having a family. Honestly, I'm so sick of it. The number that used to matter when you would brag to your friends, you know, the number like, oh, I've been with this many. Been, yeah, notch count. No yeah. one mm-hmm. cares anymore. Mm-hmm. Like, who cares about what the number is anymore at this point? It mm-hmm. mattered in the 20s. Mm-hmm. It doesn't matter in your 40s. What, what challenges is that 40-year-old male going to face mm-hmm. to go from being fully free for mm-hmm. many, many years to all of a sudden decide to commit to one person and build a family, mm-hmm. what challenge is that guy going to face? Yeah, it's, it, I, I have, my, my friend John from Modern Life Dating is a probably a pretty good example of this as well, is once you get to that point, once you get to like 36, 37 years old, and let's just say you've been on your game, you have maximized your potential uh, as, you know, your value as a guy, uh, there will come a point where you have... Um, let's just say, solve the mystery of women. You've solved the mystery of money. You've solved the mystery of whatever it is that sort of has been your obsession for as long as it has been. And now it seems kind of like, uh, like old, old news to you. And what's the next challenge? What's, what's, the, next, what's the next goal? And I, I, I have said this as well, is that I think that, again, that men and women are innate complements. We're better together than we are apart. And I think that uh, at some stage, men are going to say, you know what, I would rather have the quality than the quantity. But those guys don't get to that stage unless they kind of go through the, the idea that they either had the, qual- the quantity or that they could have had the quantity. Um, most men, like I said, when the average age of marriage for men is uh, the, the ones that are getting married is like 29 years old. That also coincides right at that epiphany phase that I was just talking to you guys about. So when that guy's 29 years old and he's not quite reached his peak potential, when he gets to 36, 37 years old, and he's already committed to a woman who was like 20 year, you know, 28 years old back in the day, he might be thinking, well, damn, I didn't know I was going to be this hot. I didn't know I was going to have this much money. I didn't know I was going to be at this status. And that's why you get things like the midlife crisis at that point. And so it's not so much a midlife crisis as it is, oh, damn, I now realize my own potential. And uh, now I'm having second thoughts or now I'm like, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm going to go buy a sports car to sort of relive my, my youth. Um, that's really sort of where that comes from. But when those guys are, are not committed and they get to 230s, that's one scenario. The other scenario is the one you just said is when they get to be 36, 37 years old, maybe 38 years old, pushing 40. And they go, you know what? I, I'm, I'm done with this. I really kind of want to want to log out and I want to you know, have something that's a little more permanent. They'll ask me. They'll say, Rolo, I don't want to get with one of these girls on Fresh and Fit who's like 18, 22 years old because they seem kind of really, you know, flighty and, and not somebody you want to start something with. But also, I don't want to get with a woman who's sort of like used up and is uh, really kind of full of herself, an alpha female at 33 years old who has sort of built herself sure. into that archetype. Yeah. What, how, where, how do I solve my problem? I tell them, you say, you know, you have to look for certain, you have to be a good judge of character. You've got to be able to, if you're reading my books, if, you've, if, you've, if you're red pill aware, if you're a good judge of character, if you maximize your potential. I've always said that the, the sweet spot is kind of somewhere between like say 25 and 27 years old and looking for a woman who, uh, who understands like what her sexual market value is versus what her personal value is. And those women do exist. I, and I, I want to point that out. It's not like, I think a lot of people think that I think all women are the same. No, or all men are the same. No, I'm not saying that. There are commonalities that are, that are characteristic of men and women. We have our sort of innate differences, of course. But when you're talking to like women in different cultures, in different religions, in different countries, wherever, though those cultures are going to be vastly different than they are here in the United States because maybe they haven't sort of been corrupted with like, you know, feminism or whatever to that point. So you're looking at women in like, like Muslim, like Muslim majority countries, you're looking at Latin, Latin countries, those the, those women are going to be of a different kind of like understanding of like, well, going forward, this is what I'm what I'm going to be about. So there's a lot of variables that get so that culture, go into that. So culture. So so at that very this is what I took from it. And, and, mm-hmm. and I'm curious what your follow up is going to be there mm-hmm. is I'll turn it over to you right after yeah. this. So to me, based on what you just said, this is what I took away from it. Culture and uh, uh, tradition Mm-hmm. Is something you ought to value at that age. You you ought to look for that. Is that kind of what you're saying? Well, that you should at least have a good understanding of what how that person, whether male or female, yeah. came to 
their certainly their belief sets, but also uh, what is it that has acculturated them into the personalities that they have. So definitely, you know, there's environmental influences, there's natural innate influences, yeah. and then there's cultural influences as well. So. What do you think about that? You know, uh, you know, split your age plus seven. Half plus seven, yeah. Plus seven, well, yeah. I, I, let me tell you something about like age appropriateness. It yeah. only works in the female sense. It doesn't work in the male sense because we live in a gynocentric social order that says, well, you know, uh, was it um, Keanu Reeves? They, when he was dating his, his uh, I think she was like 46 and he's like my age, like 53 or 54 years old. And the woman he was dating at the time looks like his mother. Looks like they, she, she's got gray hair and everything, and, and women were just like, "Yay, you're dating somebody that's uh, that's age appropriate." You look at Leonardo DiCaprio; none of his girlfriends have been older than 25 years old, and as right. soon as they get to 26, he cycles them out and gets another 23 right, like year it's an old. Expired can of milk, exactly. And so that's and and you can there are actually online sites that like track his his girlfriends' ages across the. So who's doing it right? Who is Leo doing it right, or is is uh? Is Keanu doing it right? Is Keanu still with the lady? I don't, I don't know, I don't but that was, yeah, that's the, that's the, the gal right there. I believe Hugh Jackman is. Uh, yeah, Hugh Jackman. Hugh Jackman is my age. He's fifty three, and his wife is sixty six years old. Or what, what's uh, Jason? Macron? Mo Jason Momoa, Momoa just broke up with uh, Lisa Bonet, who is fifty four, and I believe he's forty one or forty two. Well, Lisa Bonet had it going on for, a uh, and she was uh, with what, Lenny Kravitz. Lenny Kravitz too. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so. Macron. Mm -hmm. uh, the, PM of France, is mm -hmm. he president, prime minister, mm -hmm. whatever? Yep, yep. His wife is like 20 years older than him. But mm -hmm. we, that, only have a, we, only have a, we only have a problem with age appropriateness when it yes. is a man that is dating a, you know, mm -hmm. kind of too, too young. So what's too young? Half plus seven? Is it 10 years? Yeah. If you look at the difference between, say, um, like uh, Lisa Bonet and, and Jason Momoa, what's that about? A 10 year difference? 13 years. Yeah, yeah well, years. 13 years. So if you got a, a guy who's 33 and he's dating a 20 year old girl, te technically it's illegal. He could go ahead and do that. But we go, oh my gosh, I, he, he's robbing the cradle, mm. right? But if it's the other way around, oh, she's a cougar. No, I, it's I, I, all I good. I don't think about it. I just think, is it going to work? You well, know, yeah, you, you yeah. may you may be like, oh, that's cool. You it's know, like Demi Moore up. and Ashton Kutcher. Yeah, you know, that was a, that was a success story. Mila for Kunis showed up. So if you enjoyed this little short segment from the podcast that we did, here's another short segment to watch. Or if you want to see the entire podcast, click over here. Take care, everybody. Bye bye.